Horace Hyde was a talent scout, and he had radio programs across America. And he came to the area, to Watertown, South Dakota, and out of 97 contestants, I won second place. From that, I got a radio show on two radio stations, and as soon as they started hearing us on radio, the word got out, and so our crowds grew, and so I started making more money and doing really good. We were coming back from a dance in, in northeastern South Dakota, and one night, and we were so tired, just totally exhausted from playing a dance in North Dakota Friday night, two radio shows Saturday, and a, and a dance Saturday night. The only one who could stay awake was Connie. So we had Connie drive. And I was just going to sleep, and I thought I'd better check my schedule once. So I took the schedule and I saw all the clubs we were going to play and the money it would be. And uh, the Lord spoke to my heart and God said, Lowell, what will you profit if you gain the whole world and lose your soul? Wow, that was just as strong as if somebody had spoken and shouted it in my ear. Again, God spoke and said, Lo, what will you be profited if you gain the whole world and lose your soul? And I knew it was the Lord, but he wanted me to get converted. Because I'd been attending church a little bit with Connie. And God was trying to win me, and I was reluctant. Finally, I felt such pressure, I finally said, God, leave me alone! God, left me alone! The next thing I heard Connie screaming at the top of her voice, and I felt the car flying off the edge into who knows what. She hit black ice. The black ice is when you, the roads are icy, but you can't tell. And so going into that corner, that sharp corner, she just flew off the edge of it. So it wasn't your fault. Anybody driving that night would have had a temptation to take the corner the same way. And I cried out to God. I said, oh, God, forgive me. Give me another chance. The car hit the plowed field and destroyed the car. But we made it out of it alive. Now you'd have thought I'd have served God after this, but I didn't. I kept on playing the, with the band. And I got a brand new car. That was one of the rewards. I was making good money so I could drive. I was the only kid in the whole college that had a brand new car. Most of the teachers didn't have cars. You know. So I was driving back to Morris, Minnesota. And I was so tired. I just thought I'd just close my eyes for just a moment just to get a week of sleep. And in that moment, crash! I knew I did something big, and I didn't know what it was, and I knew I was gonna, the car would go careening off like a hockey puck. I, I, I cried out, I said, God, give me another chance. I'm sorry. Well, the car came to a stop, but if I'd have been over six more inches, I, I'd have been dead. There wouldn't have been any Lowell Lundstrom Ministries. There wouldn't have been any Lowell Lundstrom. And there wouldn't be Celebration Church. It's all going back to the mercy of God. I got serious about this. And one Sunday night, we usually would go to a dance, we'd go to play the dance on Saturday night, go to church on Sunday, argue religion Sunday afternoon. And we'd go through that ritual week after week. So what, what happened was, I felt that I had to do something about my soul. And in that service that night, it's like one man of God said, there is an invisible line and who knows when God's grace ends and his wrath begins. I want to memorize it. Say it with me. Say there's an invisible line. There's an invisible line. And who knows when? And who knows when? God's grace ends. God's grace ends. And his wrath begins. And his wrath begins. Boy, I just knew it was really pressuring me. So finally I, I decided I'd, I'd go up and pray. But I didn't go to the altar to pray. I prayed in the second row. I was covering my bed. <laughs> so I prayed and I said, Oh Lord, if you can forgive me of, of my many sins and if you can save me so I really know it, so I have peace with God in my heart, I want to serve you, Lord. And I gave him as much of me as I possibly could. I said, Lord, I give you my whole heart, my soul, everything. And the Lord came into my heart that Sunday night, and I'll never forget the joy that came as I was washed in the blood of the Lamb. That's a theological term that means the blood of Christ makes us acceptable to God. Mm -hmm. And as the Lord had forgiven me, I was so happy. 
I, I, when I got it from my knees, I said, wait till everybody hears about this. <laughs> it's the greatest news that ever could be. You can be on your way to hell, and if you will heed the call of Christ, He'll forgive your sins and save you and fill you with His Spirit, and He'll guide you through your life. He's the best friend you could ever have. Say, my best friend. My best friend. How many friends do you have that would die for you? Christ died for the ungodly. He died for all of our sins. And we're on a mission trying to help people get saved, trying to get them to heaven. I've never understood it why people go to church, and if they're not serving God, many of them are hoping the preacher won't preach to them. Listen, the preacher's job is to help convert you. And if he can't, can't, if he can't help you get converted, he's not worthy of his position. He's not worth what you're paying him. The preacher's job is to help you. And when you're stuck in sin, it's hard to get out of it because you end up saying, I was always afraid I'd start out and I'd be a few months and I'd go back. But you know what? When the Lord saved me, I, He not only gave me life here, He gave me eternal life. Amen. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Amen. Amen. You're forgiven of sin. It's the greatest, greatest news ever. And the Lord saved me, and here I've been 53 years going. And the Lord's blessed me and helped me, and I thank God that I can be a pastor here. So endeth the testimony of Lowell Lundstrom. Thank you. We're giving that hand to Jesus, because without Jesus, there's not one of us would ever make it. That's right. But he said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I'll be with you always, even to the end of the world. Christ not only will dwell in your heart, he will walk by your side. Yes. His angels will watch over you. No, listen. I'd like to help you find your Savior. I'd like to help you get saved. I can't save you. No preacher can save you. But Jesus can save you, and he will. But you've got to make a decision. You've got to act. Yes. You have to move. You have to make a commitment. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Father in heaven, I thank you for your goodness. I praise you for watching over me these 53 years and giving me such a wonderful life with my wife, Connie, and Londa, and Lisa, and LJ, and Lance, and all these wonderful friends that I can be a partner with, that we can be a family together. Help us now in Jesus' name. While our heads are bowed and eyes are closed in prayer. Let's take inventory, shall we? The Bible says, let a man examine himself. Examine your heart. If you die today, are your sins all forgiven? How many are sure that all your sins are forgiven? If you die today, you know you go to heaven. Raise your right hand. You're sure your sins are forgiven. God bless you. Put your hands down. Now many of you are so honest you wouldn't raise your hand. Now God is reaching out for you. He really cares about you more than you realize. God has protected you with angels. He, you could have died a dozen times, but He spared your life. Now you should show your appreciation by giving Him your life back. Give your life back to God while our heads are bowed. I'm going to ask you to get up in a moment, to get up out of your seat and come and meet me here at the front. We're going to pray and the Lord's going to forgive your sin. Your whole new life will begin with just one, one sentence prayer. The thief on the cross said, Lord, remember me. And Jesus said, today you'll be with me in paradise. All of you that raise your hand who would like to give Christ your life, you're not joining a church by doing this, but you're coming to Christ. Every one of you that want to give your heart to the Lord, you raise your hand. Get up out of your seat and meet me here in the front. Come right now. Stand. We're going to pray together in prayer in just a moment. Come now. felt paralyzed. It's my sin that got me so 
through such a jam I couldn't get free until I cried out to the Lord. So the devil will try to oppose you, but you can come. Come and meet us here. We'll sing it one more time. Ask your friend next to you to come. Come as we sing. Come.